Do you know what I am known for? I was the third president who wrote the Declaration of Independence and built my home in Monticello. My greatest accomplishment was the Louisiana Purchase. I doubled the size of America. I wrote this letter in May of 1804 to Captains Meriwether Lewis and William Clark and the brave soldiers of the United States Corps of Discovery. As you begin your expedition, remember the following reasons for your journey. One, the mission. Explore the Missouri River and determine if there is a practical water route that leads to the Pacific Ocean. Two, the people. Make a record of the Native Americans that live along the trail and study their ways and languages. Make friendships if possible. Three, the land. Study and observe any unusual plants and animals, as well as landforms, minerals, climate, and weather that you find on your journey. <laughs> Jefferson by taking a group of men to find a route to the Pacific Ocean. We called our group the Corps of Discovery. Our trip was dangerous and challenging. On the long journey, we met a young lady named Sacha Tulia who helped us. Maybe you'll meet her later. Hi, I am William Clark. I was a leader and artist in the Corps of Discovery group. My job was to help Lewis get to, to the Pacific Ocean. I also had to draw sketches of any new plant, animal, plants, or people we met along the way. Here are a few of my journal entries. President Jefferson expected us to gather as much information as possible about this new land. So my journals were extremely important to our mission. There were lots of things we needed on our journey. Give a thumbs up if you think we needed these supplies and give a thumbs down if you think we did not. A journal. Gold coins. A lantern. And beads. I put some coins for you in your time capsule. You may need them later. Your journey will now continue west. Follow the trails till you reach the Great Plains. In the summer of 1804, the expedition reached the Great Plains. The Great Plains are a vast area of land that is flat, covered with grass, and has very few trees. When they arrived, they met a tribe of friendly Indians who lived there. Lewis and Clark also saw many animals for the first time ever. They saw giant buffalo, elk. Lewis and Clark also saw their first ever coyote, but they called it a prairie wolf. They tried to catch it, but they said it barked like a large, fierce dog. They did manage to capture one curious new animal, though. It was a small ant, a small creature that also made dog hair noises, so they named it a prairie dog. They caged up this animal and sent it to President Jefferson. Later, this land would become a great place to move for us and new settlers. We could plant crops and and build homes here as well. We could also have animals nearby for meat. We were glad that these brave explorers found, discovered this land for our future home. Now, if you can answer some questions from your future, I will see if I can send you some items in your time capsule. <laughs> Yes, my husband and I to travel with them. 
and help talk to the Indian tribes. So I became an explorer. And Pomp is the name of my little baby. I learned the Shaman Explorer on my back. Translating language helped my friends. Translating means helping people understand each other, even though they speak different languages. I cannot speak English, but I understood enough to guide my new friends. I learned how to trade and we synergized with the local tribes. It was a sign of peace. Many tribes held us to make a long journey to the Pacific Ocean and back home again. Can anyone raise their hand and tell me one thing you've learned about my life? I put some special items in your time capsule. They may come in handy for you to share with your local tribes. the expedition reached the Great Falls and began to see many grizzly bears. The men had to find a way to get to get their boats and supplies up and over the falls. Because the boats were so big and heavy, this was a very difficult problem to solve. After moving the boats and supplies beyond the falls, Lewis and Clark decided to build and travel the smaller, lighter boats used by the Native Americans. What type of boats do you think Lewis and Clark decided to build? If you guess canoe, then you're right. They, they chose this kind of boat because they are smaller, lighter, faster, and easier to handle in the water and, and move on the land. During one of their trips in these smaller boats, a boat tipped over, jumping out during the supplies. Sacagawea bravely saved many of these supplies. After you answer some questions from your teacher, be sure to check your time cap. You may find a surprise for most Native American women. Welcome, travelers. I am Chief Kim Wade. You have arrived in my village in the summer of 1805. We are a friendly tribe of Native Americans known as the Shoshone tribe. When the expedition entered the village, Sacagawea recognized me, their chief. Do you remember that Sacagawea was kidnapped as a girl? She had not seen her real family for many years, but she immediately knew that I was her long lost brother because this was such a lucky discovery that Captain Lewis and Clark named their campsite here in my village Camp Fortunate. After a few days rest with my tribe, the explorers were ready to be on their way again, but they were headed up the mountains and needed horses. They traded gold coins and supplies for horses to continue their journey over the Big River Mountains. I warned them that the travels through the mountains could be rough and dangerous. I gave them candles for a long for the long nights in which they must safe journey. Before you travel too far ahead of your journey, you should check your time capsule. The group next headed out to the across the Bitterroot Mountains. They are part of the Rocky Mountains, using help of many horses and a handful and a handful of Shoshone guys. Part of the journey proved the most difficult. Many of them suffered from frostbite, hunger, dehydration, bad weather, freezing temperatures, and, ex and exhaustion. Clark even said, I have been wet and as cold in every part of I ever was in my life. Indeed, I was at one time fearful at my feet would freeze in the thin moccasins that, which I wore. At one point, the guys had to teach the explorers how to dig roots and roots and what bark they could eat to survive. They even restored eating a candle wax because they were so hungry. Still, despite the mir miraculous mountains and conditions, not a single explorer was lost. After 11 days on the trail, the corpse stumbled upon a tribe of friendly Nez Perce Indians. The Indians took the weary travelers, fed them, and helped them regain their health. As the corpse recovered, they built dugout canoes, then left their corpse with the Nez Perce and braved the Clearwater River. Traveling can be dangerous. You should be prepared. Check your time capsules to make sure you have all the items you need. <laughs> Welcome to our village. We hear you have had a hard journey through the mountains. Sacagawea tells us that many of you got sick and you have had little food. You are lucky to have Sacagawea with you. 
Sacagawea was known for using the plants and animals around her to help her create medicine. This helped Lewis and Clark since they needed medicine along the trip for men who got sick. Thank goodness you had Sacagawea to teach you how to use the plants and animals of the earth to make medicines and to eat food. Many of those plants you saw in those mountains were good to eat, but many can be poisonous too. As medicine women, we must know what plants are good and what plants are bad, bad for our people. We, we must learn to use those plants as well as animals to make, to make medicines to help when our people get sick or injured. Let us show you what plants we use for our medicines. Peppermint was used to treat headaches, stomach aches, nausea, rashes, and even for gas. <laughs> Cinnamon was used for pain relief, to treat colds and flu, and to help stop bleeding. Lavender treated skin infection, bug bites, muscle cramps, crying babies, and to help people get to sleep. Liquor smooth coughs, sore throats, and smooth aches, and, and tooth aches. Chamomile treated burns and cramps. It also reduced swelling and helped with sleep too. Native Americans used animals for medicine too, but they believed in using the whole animal when an animal has died. Many animals were used for their meat, skins, and to create medicines. There here are some animals we use. Porcupine quills were used as needles and to make medicines wheels thought to ward off sickness. Fat from deer and buffalo were made into creams for the skin. Snake venom treated spider bites and helped it with their pain with heart pain. Snake skin helped with rashes. Of all of these animals, the one animal that was most frequently used was the snake. Go check the time capsule for something you may need along the way. Welcome to the Pacific Ocean in November of 1805, when the Lewis and Clark expedition finally reached the Pacific Ocean. But did you know, two weeks before William Clark wrote in his journal, Ocean in View of a Joy Behold, he was really at a large river though, river though and not the ocean. By the time he realized his mistake, a bad storm had arrived. When they finally did it was winter time. The travelers voted to stay for the winter before heading back home with all their discoveries. They stayed at Fort Clapstop, an Indian fort that was abandoned for the winter. While they were there, a whale was spotted. Having never seen one before, Sacagawea thought it was a sea monster. After a long winter, the group set off back home to tell the president all about their travels. Good explorers have to be on the lookout at all times. Get your binoculars out and look like this. time capsule one more time.